Hello. Uh, let's briefly talk about development of modern theory. As we know today, you all, it's almost impossible to create a brand new opening. But from time to time, we get suggestions <coughs> of some improvement or some new ideas in various different openings. Normally when suggestion comes from a weaker player, sometimes uh, it's, it goes away unattended and uh, ups people don't pay close attention. But when those ideas come from strong players, from grandmasters, they sometimes a lot of people, they don't even check whether idea is good or bad. They just have a lot of followers. The ideas have a lot of followers. So we put some of these ideas to test. And using it, uh, the, well, putting to test, we're using very powerful Ripka engine. The Ripka engine also needs help while testing those ideas because from time to, mo most of the time it does on its own, but from time to time we put it, we fit it some positional idea or maybe even sacrificing idea. Well, it operates and this test is put on a super powerful hardware, something like 8 or 16 core uh, engine processor. So let's try some of this test. A couple of years ago, one of the grandmasters, um, it was in Texas, and he suggested, and it was a young grandmaster, and he made rather <coughs> extreme statement that in this position if black plays a6 white will never get an advantage now if I get this suggestion from someone rated 14 15 1600 I wouldn't even uh, I wouldn't even consider listening uh, listening him uh, taking him seriously but here grandmaster is saying and he explains that the idea of a6 is to try to play bishop g4 if white naturally develops knight f3 and bishop g4 followed by e6 <coughs> will give white will give black comfortable position. Besides, he was saying that if bishop d3, white simply gonna lose a d pawn unless they wanna take with a bishop and let knight f6 come out with a tempo. And his other argument was if uh, uh, white plays I don't know, something like e5, then bishop f5 will be developed comfortably. Well, it had some ground. This idea has some ground. But I, I was still skeptical. And interestingly enough, not too long ago, uh, we put this to test for Ripka. Now, the way we put this to test, uh, I remember that in the very well-known position, this is very well-known position of Karo Kian. Ripka, since uh, her tendencies are quick development, and sacrifice for advantage in development, Ripka would consider bishop d3 as one of the main response. 
<coughs> sacrificing the d4 pawn and going knight f3, queen d8, and queen e2. Sacrificing pawn, but after long analysis with herself, Ripka came to conclusion that it's approximately equal, so white has compensation for a pawn, but no more than that. Now, this is very important to remember. I remember that, and that's why I gave Ripka this position to analyze. And now, bishop d3. <clears throat> I have to point that black is forced, practically, to accept the pawn sacrifice. Now, why is black forced to accept pawn sacrifice? Here is the explanation. You making an a6 move because you think that on bishop d3 you win a pawn and on knight f3 you're going to go bishop g4. But if after bishop d3 you don't win a d pawn, then whole idea goes downhill. So then there is no justification to a6 move. But after d takes e, knight takes e4, and queen takes d4, <coughs> uh, this position, position was given to Ripka to analyze for quite a bit time. And I have to tell you, if you <coughs> give almost any position, uh, for Ripka to analyze when it uses uh, very powerful hardware, you know that analysis will be 100% perfect. There will be no flow, and you will have the absolute answer. Now, let me tell you how the evaluations work. If Ripka has an advantage gives you an advantage of 0.2 to 0.3. That means white has an advantage. If Ripka gives that white has 0.5, that means half a point, <clears throat> uh, advantage or higher, that means Ripka is winning. N Position is winning, that means position is winning, providing that white plays perfect moves. And when Ripka gives this evaluation, under those terms, that very powerful engine and give you precise time, that means position, that's it. Black is lost. And this position in this position, the evaluation was 0.8. So, which means that after knight f3, and the best move here to go all the way back to stay out of the harm's way, this position Ripka considers as winning for white. <coughs> I found it very amusing to see what would happen now, what would happen? White would simply castle. Now you will see the powerful of analysis. Now we're going to make moves for black that can only make any sense. Of course, we are not going to analyze A5 move or H5 move that absolutely make no sense and sound look ridiculous. So the only two moves you can possibly consider is bishop to g4 or bishop to f5. Well, I tried to challenge Ripka, not so much to challenge, so to see what she came up with, because lots of analysis are hidden. Oh, and I started displaying them. 
first bishop f5. <coughs> on bishop f5, um, on bishop f5, one of the possible continuations is no. The best move is queen e2, e6, rook d1. This is very important move because now white prepares. White doesn't want to develop rest of the pieces and have advantage in development. Ripka thinks here, and it's proved, that white's advantage is so big that it's time to capitalize on it right now. So after rook d1, knight d7, move that makes a lot of sense, and after knight e2 g5, black is completely lost. Now, that seem like very easy moves to play, but you know there are a lot of easy moves to play. Lots of them, but you have to pick one that is right, only one that is right. There's a lot the, the sequence of move is absolutely perfect here. And after uh, bishop takes d3, rook takes d3, uh, this position is totally lost for uh, black. Knight takes f7 is coming and is practically no defense. Now, if you have any engine at home, you can put it and you will see that it's so. This is totally lost position for black. Now, let's consider a slightly different way to play for uh, black. And actually, that was my pick for defending for black. I, I was not defending position, uh, this position for black in a way that I like this position, but I just wanted to see basis of Ripka's evaluation. So what happened here after castle, bishop g4. But after bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, and queen e2. <coughs> and after queen e2, uh, e6 should be played, normal move, rook d1, and after rook d1, uh, you see the queen will um, be vulnerable in, uh, in a lot of positions. So after rook d1, what can uh, black play? I thought the best move was bishop e7 somehow to stop knight g5 and try to develop the <coughs> knight on f6. I wasn't exactly worried about <coughs> bishop takes a6. Get it? We're just giving the pawn back up, but after queen c7, white lost two valuable tempos uh, in uh, in a search for attack, and after knight f6, actually black may be okay here. But of course, Ripka did not even consider taking the a pawn. And here, again, Ripka gives completely crushing idea, totally winning. This position it's hard to imagine that white can win in a few moves. And the way it happened, g4, bishop g6, knight e2 g5, and there is no defense. This is absolutely over. Now threatening bishop takes g6, and after queen c7, for example, um, after queen g7, bishop takes g6, h takes g, knight takes f7. Now, here comes the po powerful of analysis. 
And this is absolutely amazing how deep is those analyses are. When we sacrifice night on F7, <coughs> we are looking for a mate in two, three moves or winning some heavy material or something like that. That's not the case in this position. King takes F7, knight E5, check. King to E8, the best move. And now, as the best continuation that absolutely wins the game is the move that I would not have guessed. There is a good move, queen E4, but a lot stronger move. Rook d3. And you're going to see how deep this move is. That's how you refute some ideas that don't have very deep crown. Rook d3 move is protecting h3 pawn. But do you really worry about <coughs> defending h3 pawn when you just sacrifice a piece? Well, here, black has no moves, no defense, no hope. Position at this stage, Ripka gives white having 2.5 advantage. 2.5 means not just winning, that means game is going to end very soon. And if you Take a close look. <coughs> you will see, well, that's the truth. Black cannot develop the knight because white simply takes it with a rook. Black has no moves. If knight f6, knight takes g6, this is crushing, followed by queen takes e6. Uh, the position is absolutely over. What 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 can black do after rook d3? After rook d3, suppose they go g5 to because of knight g6, they may go rook h6. You see the pawn on g5 prevents white bishop taking the rook. But then knight g6 and on rook h6, it's just one uh, little sample. The queen takes e6, attacking the g8 knight. And after knight f6, comes back knight e5. <coughs> you see the position is... We shouldn't be even looking at it. Now, that's how easy it is. On something like knight d5... There is an uh, immediate mate after check, king d8, and queen g8, uh, the mate next move. So you see the powerful of analysis when it says white is up 0.5 or higher. You know that's a forced, well, that's a winning advantage, maybe not force mate or something, but that means you have much bigger advantage than you normally entitled for white in any other opening. If black holds white, in the opening analysis, if black holds white under 0.2, that means black is more or less okay an opening can be tried, and that's an idea. Now, but if advantage goes way up, and here is the case, e4, c6, d4, d5, and if you search database, you see that there's a lot of followers to a6 move. And after bishop d3, d, e, knight takes e4, when black takes the pawn on d4, which is only justification for playing a6 then after knight f3 white according to ripka has 
the size advantage. This is actually one <coughs> of the opening idea of a very strong player and his followers been totally refuted by Ripka. Now, sometimes I come up with, uh, with uh, some ideas for white and black and most of the most of these ideas uh, lately nobody sees them because now I have this tool Ripka engine that refutes unfortunately uh, most of the suspicious ideas and that's why world never sees them. Ripka refutes a lot of my ideas. Some of them she likes, and but I conduct further analysis. She refutes a lot of my ideas, but I still try to maintain friendly relationship with Ripka. So, let's go to the different opening idea that was considered very interesting for black. Now, uh, let's look at one popular variation of a French defense. There is bishop g5 move, but we're going to look at e5 continuation, knight fd7, f4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e3, queen b6, and knight a4, queen a5, c3, c takes d, and b4. This is a very, very well-known position in modern theory, and it was known as white has an advantage, but then it was changing from time to time, and the final word was the white was a little better. And we have in mind this piece sacrifice, CB, bishop takes b4, bishop d2, bishop takes d2, knight takes d2, black has three pawns for a minor piece, but the pawns are doubled, so they, they are not as strong. However, white has very badly placed knight on a4. And now we don't want to go deep into analysis of this position. Uh, what I want to tell you only is that lately they came up with improvement for black. An improvement is supposed to be the castling move instead of b6. It is very well known move. And after castling, uh, black did very well in some games. The b6 was played, but now after castling, white has to uh, conclude development. What should white do? Now, if white goes b5, I mean bishop d3, then black goes b5, and after knight b2, knight b6, followed by knight c4. And white may get very uncomfortable. On the other hand, if white goes bishop e2, then black has very powerful respond d3. And after white takes on d3, then queen to b4, attacking the f4 pawn, which is not very easy to defend. And let me tell you why. Queen b4 is very dangerous move. 
you cannot castle because of queen d4 check, winning the d3 pawn. Also, black is threatening b5, trapping the knight on a4. You see, white does not have knight b2, retrieving square. And if y, if black manages to win the f4 pawn, then e5 pawn is going to fall. So this may be very dangerous for white. However, and and the move castle was uh, looking very good. <coughs> However, um, after this position was given to Ripka, and Ripka spent a lot of time on it, putting on a special testing mode with, I would repeat, with uh, super powerful hardware, which makes analysis absolutely flawless. After bishop d3, white has a serious advantage. And how the analysis go? So that, that practically refutes black's castling move. After bishop d3, b5, knight b2, knight b6, white castles, and black goes knight c4, creating threat knight takes knight, as well as knight e3, and taking this knight on c4 will give black very powerful pawn chain. That's where Ripka proves big advantage for white. So after knight c4, bishop takes h7 check. Most of the time this sacrifice should lead, either should lead to a mate or it's wrong sacrifice. In this case, it just leads to white's advantage. King takes, queen h5 check, king g8. Knight b takes to c4, and black must take with a b pawn. Taking with a d pawn will be devastating after knight e4, and white has absolutely crushing attack with ideas knight g5 as well as knight f6 check. B takes c4, and now knight f3. Well, the idea is to go knight g5, and um, it's interesting. When I put this position a few times on different engines, <coughs> or even on Ripka, but with uh, uh, not as powerful hardware, for a long time, uh, analysis were favoring black, but this was analysis on a, on the highest imaginable level with the most powerful hardware. The, the answer is white has big advantage. Black has two moves here, f6 and g6. And we're going to analyze both of them. Uh, if f6, e takes f, and now the best move is queen c7. Obviously, rook takes f6, knight g5 is very bad for black. You cannot go rook h6 because there is a mate in one move and the uh, threat of queen h7 check followed by queen h8 and queen takes g7 is very strong. So the best moves, I am going to give you the best moves for both sides and what is the conclusion in the end. But if there are, if you think, 
oh, there is an easy move for black in this and that case, or what to do on this move, that means answer should be very easy, and you can find it yourself, or just put on any engine. Everything I'm showing you is very sophisticated and very absolute perfect. Anything, any side variations can be easily detected by uh, human eye or any uh, medium level engine. So after EF, Queen, C7, F takes G, well, this is the uh, idea, actually, after EF, Knight is on F3, Queen, C7, FG, Queen takes G7, and Knight, E5, very strong move. Now, notice all black has to do, they defend their king because there's no immediate threats now, and then they will have very powerful uh, pawn chain in the center there. So, knight e5, rook f5, queen h4, queen f6, and here queen g3 check, and after queen g7 is uh, a rather difficult move. Uh, we give queen g3 check first. We want black's queen on g file. And then we play queen to e1. And black has very, very bad position. The threat is rook f4, f3 and g3 with a knight on e5. <coughs> Actually, Ripka's analysis went a lot further, but this position, if you look closely and with your engine, you will see that white has sizable advantage here. So, going back now to the position where white played knight to f3. So, let's see what black's options are. There is g6 move. And after g6, again, for a long time, computer was giving uh, any other engine, sir, were giving advantage to black, or at least equal for black. Queen h6, Queen c7. But now Ripka came with absolutely, absolutely powerful and I, I would say ingenious a way of getting uh, an advantage. Notice that something like knight g5 is uh, not decisive by far, even f6 is possible. I don't know about rook e8, rook e8 probably bad, but after f6, black is doing very well. But queen takes g7, g6, queen g7, and it's not very good position for white. But here comes the devastating blow uh, by Rivka. f5, very powerful move, forces black to take with e-pawn. Obviously, taking with d pawn after queen g5 and queen f6 check, followed by knight g5, will give white a uh, winning attack. f5, e takes f, and it's difficult, very difficult to find this sequence of moves. After e takes f, simply rook, knight is on f3, simply rook, a1, to e1. And now, if you take very close look to the, at this position, you're realizing that black is totally busted. The reason is for this that knight g5 is coming. f6 is going to be inevitable for black. Black has to play f6 sooner or later. That's when 
he is gonna take on f6, rook is coming with chilling threats, and that's why the pawn was sacrificed more earlier. e takes f, and after rook a to e1, knight g5 is next move, so f6 has to be played. Now, something like bishop a6 is going to simply lose to e6. Now you see that, and after f, e simply rook takes e6. So the move f6 is absolutely forced. e takes f. And now you see that rook takes f6 is impossible because rook takes e8 mates next move. So um, after e takes f, queen h7 is forced. And now queen f4. And after... Now if rook takes f6, then queen takes d4. White is absolutely dominating, and black is to almost resignable. D5 pawn is hanging as well. So queen ta rook takes f6, loses. So queen f7 has to be played. And now rook e7, queen takes f6, rook f to e1. And black's position is resignable. Queen h6 is coming. Uh, there is absolutely no defense. Knight g5. Now those pawns in the center are totally worthless. Black is defenseless, and that concludes White's idea with f5. Those are absolutely phenomenal analysis uh, by Ripka and you see that's that's what it, that, there is a difference between computer engine and super computer engine and Ripka is of course a supercomputer and there is a big difference as well between between regular hardware and very powerful hardware. As a result, we got absolutely impeccable analysis and we can say, now that variation, if black plays castle in the hand of a, a knowledgeable player who knows the analysis, it's a forced win. That's how um, uh, that's how powerful the analysis are. And so what can we say that uh, a position where black castle, here is the position, let me reconstruct the position where black castles. So what is the final word about this position? Here is the position. White has pawns and Here's the position where black, instead of well-known move b6, would try, knight is on d2, would try to castle. Now, after move bishop d3, a position can be evaluated as winning for white. Now, before the evaluation, before this era of rip analysis, and putting openings on compu completely different level analysis of the opening. You could say, well, based on the analysis, white is better, has some advantage. No. Now, at this point, it's exact science. Bishop d3 gives white winning position because 
if black does not enter these complications. For example, if black plays some move like h6. But then white castles and then just win with an extra piece eventually. So, <coughs> the idea of castling to give black enough counterplay to stop white uh, getting quiet position with extra piece. And after bishop d3 and b5, knight d2, knight b2, knight b6, castle, and knight c4, what, when we saw bishop takes h7, king h7, queen h5, check king g8, knight b takes c4, forcing bc, I'm repeating, on dc is knight e4, with easy win, bc, knight f3, black has f6, and g6. In both case, white gets winning position. And it's interesting, if you don't play accurately, and you don't play according to analysis we just looked, very likely you're going to get bad position with white. So it's kill or be killed. And based on this analysis, white does kill. Before we go to next example, first of all, I want to differentiate here between Ripka uh, engine and all other engines. Uh, computers, since they start existing in chess, they were always known as very, very good, the best defenders. That's why they liked to uh, take a pawn to, if you sacrifice some material like pawn, they will take it and they are on the highest level of defense. Now, here comes the difference between Ripka and other engines. Ripka is just as good at defense as all other engines, but it has much better realization and understanding of initiative. And that's why it will not take every pawn you will sacrifice, and it's a lot more uh, likely to sacrifice some pawn and look for initiative a lot more than for just quiet play. And it looks not, it's not more aggressive than other engines. It's just looking for initiative because when it has some piece placed on active square, it tries to take the most out of this piece. That's why what makes uh, this engine very, very powerful. And next example is absolutely a great illustration of what I just mentioned. Remember, in the first example, Ripko voluntarily just once to sacrifice pawn even in a very well-known position of Carol Cam. In this position, she wants to get advantage in development and sacrifice pawn, but later on it says, no, maybe we shouldn't do that. So the tendency is towards advantage in development a lot more than towards the winning uh, material. Now, let's look at one variation, another variation of French. Uh, after e46, d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6. Well, we already looked at e5, but bishop g5 is another very popular move. d takes e, knight takes e4, bishop e7, bishop takes f6, 
won't take success. It, it's a very, very popular line for black. What black does is doubles the pawns on a king side and later it tries to play f5, maintaining control in its center and develop black bishop on b7, somehow having two bishop advantage and to restrict white's play. Let's look at it. G takes f, knight f3, f5, and a point, the reason why white plays f5 because <coughs> it was very popular um, several years ago to play a6 uh, and then followed by b5 and bishop b7 but then white would play c4 and uh, on f5 knight c3 black would have some difficulties that's why white plays immediate f5 knight c3 and now a6 and b5 a6 <coughs> queen d2 b5 castle long and bishop b7 now this position was played number of times but Ripka evaluates this position as a um, very very bad position for black and when this position was played no one played d5 because of b4 and this position was played several times but Ripka shows of course, on a very sophisticated level, uh, with a uh, high level, uh, high end hardware, um, d5 is <clears throat> nearly winning continuation after b4. The move that was totally underestimated or just simply missed by all the uh, other engines was bishop c4 <coughs> and after bishop c4 position is considered lost for black and there are several different ways black can play but they cannot uh, get out of this position get out alive I mean okay let's see the choices black has after bishop c4 pawn takes c3 this is one move queen takes c3 and well bishop f6 is bad because of queen b3 which is absolutely devastating. Rook e1 is coming, bishop is hanging, d takes e is threatening, and the position is totally hopeless. So, what is the best move after queen takes c3? One of the better moves is e5 trying to stop, well, rook is hanging, obviously, <coughs> trying to stop white from opening the d-file. e5, knight takes e5, and now castle. While it is down a piece, they have to show something very quick, or compensation will be insufficient d6 every move is forced bishop takes d6 bishop takes f7 rook takes f7 and of course now white is not simply taking the rook but white plays white has here 
very powerful queen b3 move. Attacking rook, attacking bishop, and after queen b3, black is lost. Possible variation, queen g5 check, king b1, bishop takes e5, queen takes b7, knight d7, queen takes a8, king g7, queen takes a6, now white has three pawns and rook for two minor pieces. <coughs> white's position is totally winning and analysis are absolutely flawless in this variation. Now, there is a uh, another continuation, another option black has. Now, we're going back to the position starting from beginning we're going back to the position there is only one other main variation uh, what black has and also total devastation uh, by white very powerful analysis here we're getting to e4 e6 d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6, bishop g5, de, knight takes e4, bishop e7, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight f3. And after f5, knight c3, a6, and uh, here, queen d2, b5, Castling, bishop b7, d5. Okay, here after b4, and we play bishop c4. Now, what is any other option can black have here? The only other option is to play e5 to keep a position closed and to restrict white from immediate intervention uh, on black's king position. So, knight e2, now the e5 pawn is hanging, bishop d6, protecting it, and now queen h6. That stops black from castling, and if black plays knight, well, there is no good suggestions, but uh, uh, knight d7. And after knight d7, uh, simply rook h1 to e1, and black has very difficult time safeguarding their king and here how masterfully uh, Ripka switches from trying to attack uh, black's king to getting positional advantage so and after rook h3 one queen f6 is practically the only move queen takes f6 Knight takes f6, and now after knight e to d4, you will see the f5 is terrible weakness. e5 pawn falls, black is totally lost. Total destruction of the uh, uh, black's position. Now, only, well, there is more into it. Now, after bishop c4 position, there is one more try 
I wanna show you by black. After b4, bishop c4, uh, only other move is a castle. Now, if black castles, now the knight is still hanging, if white takes on e6, black can take white's queen and then take white's knight. White simply responds with knight e2. Now, if black plays ed after knight g3, dc and queen h6, black is totally lost. Queen is hanging, knight takes f5 is coming, knight h5 is coming, there is no defense. So what uh, black should do here, should play bishop takes d5, then bishop takes d5, and queen takes d5. Okay, black, white has here queen h6 move, uh, but that's not the best move, because after queen takes a2, white may not have any more than a perpetual check after black takes the knight on g5. The best move for white in this position to exchange queens ed rook takes d5 and after knight c6 rook takes f5 just simply extra pawn and the better position there is no equality at all for black and therefore again total refutation of very popular position and popular way to play for black it's another example of power of the uh, analysis I have seen uh, some ideas in the opening <coughs> recommended by various strong players that it seems like very anti-positional and you know that it's wrong but it's not very easy to refute and I've seen those ideas being played and even fairly good players, grandmasters, had a problem dealing with them. Well, one of those ideas, and I will see, I will show you how Ripka reacted to one of these ideas. And actually, it may be very helpful for you to know how to play there. e4, knight f6, e5. And we used to see only knight d5 move because that's the only move that really make any sense. Makes any sense. So, but knight g8. <coughs> they say that this move, knight g8, they say makes a lot of sense. Because if knight can come to d5 and being attacked afterwards and making more moves back, why don't we put back knight to g8 and then try to play against the e5 pawn and make white somehow take and you don't feel that you are behind in development because white made two pawn moves. And <coughs> I've seen quite a few games where white didn't get big advantage and I've played this for white and I had, I didn't have difficulties, but I had difficulties getting what I want. And normally when somebody plays, 
after e4 knight f6 e5 knight g8 you have you want to get a lot and i didn't but i had comfortable position now let's look at e4 knight f6 e5 knight g8 d4 d6 knight f3 and the bishop g4 just like they play in a regular other kind defense with knight on d5. Uh, bishop g4 or h3, bishop h5, and e6. Now e6 is not a new move. It was played before. f takes e, but here move g4 was played. Now, let me tell you, there were several games, and uh, one of the games, White won, but it was not convincing. And White, I don't think White even had a good position here. Let me go um, on, let's go on with this game. Bishop g6, knight g5, queen d7, queen e2. Black always seems like on the verge of destruction, but it never happened. e5, d5, getting out post for knight e6. This was game, so after knight f6, bishop g2, <coughs> h6, knight e6, and pawn c6, trying to blow the um, support the base of the knight on e6. Uh, c4, bishop f7. I think white is not developed that greatly and they put the knight on e6 maybe too early. Knight takes f8. Now knight made uh, four moves and took the totally undeveloped piece. Rook takes f8, knight c3, e6, dc, knight takes c6. Now, bishop e3, here, queen e7, white castled, black went g5. It's very hard to evaluate this position conclusively. So, <coughs> White won the game. It was game between two grandmasters played just last year. Uh, but that's not the way Ripka uh, likes to play. Well, now let's compare this to Ripka's solution to this problem. And you will see a day and night difference. The person that played the game we just looked with white, at a famous grandmaster, Catronius, he got good position, a fairly good position, double-edged, which nothing wrong with. And Ripka gets nearly winning position. e4, knight f6, e5, knight g8, d4, d6, knight f3, bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, e6, f e. Now, I would, <coughs> I mentioned it before, but I will be repeating it every time. When I say Ripka, it's not the Ripka that you can analyze with. It's a Ripka on a very sophisticated level. It's on the level, it's the latest version, one you may have just as well, but it was, that is put on long, long analysis on a super powerful hardware that will give you a totally flawless analysis. I have to repeat it every time just to emphasize the power of analysis and preciseness of it. So, um, in this position, Ripka likes the bishop c4 move. 
Well, this is the move that gives white very clear edge next to winning. Now, if queen d7, then we're going to castle and go rook e1. So, the best move is d5 here. And now, Ripka plays check. And you know, after c6, bishop e2. <coughs> it looks passive, but it's very powerful. Now, Ripka wants to play knight e5 and totally block these pawns. And black is going to have serious problem. On knight d7, for example, after knight g5, it's nearly over. Black is totally devastated. So, best move. The best. Remember, we're playing the absolute best moves for both sides. If you think that one of the sides didn't make the best move, especially the side that against us, that we're analyzing this for white. I mean against us, I mean for black. <coughs> if you think that that side had a better move, then you have to do some work on your own. We cannot analyze every move with every possible continuation. We give you the best. Something that is not the best, you should be able to find yourself what to do on or try Ripka of your version of Fritz or some other engine will find the solution for you. The best move is bishop takes f3 to prevent knight from going to g5 or e5. Bishop takes f3. Bishop takes f3 and queen d6. We castle. Knight d7. And we go rook e1. Now, there are two moves. g6, actually three moves. g6, knight f6, and e5. <coughs> Here, why these analyses are so valuable. Ripka gives, they all look like Good moves for black, but they are all giving a huge advantage to white. And let's go one by one. E5. Move makes a lot of sense, but it's bad. Because D takes E. Knight takes E5. And here, bishop takes D5 gives a white very, very big advantage. Very difficult to play for black. <coughs> On CD, simple bishop f4, winning the piece back, giving white absolutely crushing position. Totally winning. Now, if queen takes d5, that's also quite bad. Because queen takes, pawn takes, rook takes, e5. And after knight f6, knight c3. Winning at least a pawn. And rook d8, there will be bishop f4. There is, or bishop g5 maybe. Pawn is not defendable on d4, there is knight b5. Black has a lot of problems and probably losing. <coughs> So, this should absolutely cover and conclude the, um, the E5 option for uh, black. So, after uh, rook E1, there is no E5. Well, let's look at G6. On G6... Very strong move is c4. Remember, we want to go c5 maybe and take on e6. c4. And on d takes c. Well, 
here's how Rick finds move like C4. <clears throat> White is better developed. <coughs> Black has artificial precision for the queen on d6. It's a little difficult to get this knight quickly in the game. c4, creating c5 threat. After d6, knight comes with the tempo in the game. <coughs> and after knight a3, knight b6, queen e2. Actually, the bishop is on f3 here. Yeah, and queen e2, you will see you're going to take on c4, you're going to have pressure on e6. You are winning here. White is winning. I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous position for black. So this is bad. That is the answer to g6 in this position. So we looked at e5, we looked at g6. <coughs> Knight gf6 with possible idea of e5. And here, uh, white comes up with very, very interesting play. So, knight gf6 was just played. Well, we, we see the idea. What would you do here with the white? What we do is we simply play queen e2. Now we stop black from playing e5. <coughs> and black naturally de defends the e6 pawn by playing king f7. Now we go c4. By going c4, we're creating absolutely deadly threat. The same threat we already mentioned, c5 and getting e6 pawn loose. So, natural reaction by black is b6, and you see how every move creates devastating threat. Now, g3, this is very, very dangerous and powerful move. Bishop f4, idea if white plays bishop f4, that's going to be winning. So, c5. And now, instead of bishop f4, on which black would go probably queen c6, knight to c3. Black is absolutely crushed, lost. Position in the center will be completely opened soon. Not to mention that knight b5 is coming on something like uh, c takes d, for example. Knight b5 just ends the game. Queen has to defend c6, and knight takes d4. <coughs> Black can resign. So, those were nearly the best moves for black and they are facing such a devastation now if you look at the position so Ripka has the healthiest approach to the problem well let's go back and let's see what just happened what just happened here if we slowly reconstruct the action what happened? E4, knight f6, e4, e5, knight g8. <coughs> Let me explain it to you uh, like if it was for total beginners. But that's the Ripka's approach. Ripka deals with it. I have a pawn on e5. I have space advantage. I have to keep it. d4, d6. Knight f3, bishop g4, h3. Bishop h5. e6 is the natural move that any human can play, and so is Ripka. So just to block black's development. 
and it has ha it has happened in various different positions of any kind, and even Carl can you see why it plays e6. That's natural. Bishop c4, <coughs> a little bit unnatural move. It looks like you want to go g4 and take immediate uh, ad advantage of uh, e6 pawn. Of course, Ripka has considered it, but that's why when you put on a long analysis, well, almost overnight, so it was all considered and evaluated, <clears throat> maybe g4 Ripka would give advantage to white also, but the best move is bishop c4, and that's how we got to this, d5, now bishop b5 check, why this check? Because we don't want black to go knight c6. On knight c6, white would probably take go g4 and knight e5. It's going to be very difficult to remove this knight from there. That's why the natural reaction is <coughs> c6 and we go bishop e2. Bishop takes f3 is the best move to weaken white's control of e5 square. Bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, and now queen d6, we castle, and after knight d7, rook e1. There is positional idea to stop e5, and tactical idea to have it, it's a tactically justified because after e5, d, knight e5, bishop takes d5, white has winning position, as we already seen it. So, which means that there is nothing else to do in this position. And so, if you cannot play e5, nothing to do but go knight f6. We already have seen g6 uh, move, and on g6 we go c4, creating the deadly threat, and after taking knight a3 and knight takes c4. And the same idea <coughs> white uses here, and on king f7, c4. Black has to prevent c5. <coughs> Black is preventing by playing b6, and if d takes c, knight a3 will give them absolutely uh, a killing attack. So there is no b5 before because knight takes b5 and rook is hanging. There on knight b6, we can simply take on c4, and we have huge advantage. So, every move was played to the end, and you just has, has seen it. g3, threatening bishop f4. You see, black gets no break. And after c5, knight c3, this total devastation on the board. It's difficult for white was in beginning to open position, but they create threat. And what happened in this game, they practically forced black to open position with moves like c5 and total devastation. So next time someone plays against you, e4, knight, f6, e5, knight, g8, there is a good weapon. <coughs> a knight, g8 idea is not a new idea. It was introduced, I don't know, maybe 35 years ago. I was a child. We didn't have these tools to to uh, uh, refute it like this. And it's sometimes what is hard for human mind is a lot easier for such a powerful uh, tool uh, that we use, meaning uh, Ripka. I have to mention that Ripka is very good in, well, as you have already seen, she's very good in finding 
decisive decisions or decisive move order when it has an initiative. But it's also very good in solving positional problems. It, it sees very well the critical squares and it can conduct very sophisticated positional play. Now let me show you <clears throat> one position, e4, e6, d4, d5, knight d2. Now, it, f5 move was played many, many times by black. Of course, it's not the main move. The main move is either knight f6 or c5. <coughs> but f5 was played, and over the period of time, uh, a lot of masters and grandmasters reacted it uh, differently in this position. And there was one master, his name was Babayev, and <clears throat> he played very good game with white. But game went totally unnoticed. And uh, we dug the database and we found that game, and that's the way Ripka wants, Ripka doesn't know about the game, Ripka wants to play following perfectly positional, well-justified ideas. Only in the end, Ripka found the <coughs> uh, improvement, which just wins the game almost outright. But here is her approach. But this approach was found by Master also, but why it wasn't found by other people? Because they thought their ways may be better. <coughs> now let's see what happens here. E takes F, E takes F, Bishop D3, good natural move, Knight F6, and Knight to E2. Well, that's it. Now let's look at this from the perspective of future plan, positional plan, and the way Ripka looks at it. Knight should not go to f3. That's not the right square for this knight because the knight on d2 becomes passive, doesn't have a good square. So knight e2 controls the very important f four square, and the other knight will be coming to f3, controlling the e5 square. This is <coughs> a positional idea. So that's why when you want to figure out what's the best way to play in certain positions, Ripka can give you good positional clue. So knight e2, Bishop d6, the castle, black castles, and knight f3. White is clearly better. What white wants to do, maybe exchanging dark square bishops and get possession of e5 square. <clears throat> knight c6, c3. <coughs> Rook e8 and bishop f4. Very good move, exchanging dark square bishops. And notice that rook takes e2 is not going to do anything any good to uh, black because white is going to play bishop takes d6. Of course, not taking rook because bishop is loose on f4 and white will still keep a good grip on the weak e5 square. So after bishop f4, bishop takes, knight takes, queen d6, g3. That was in this Babayev's game that he played, his Russian master. So Enripka, not knowing it, playing the same moves, it, Ripka knows that there is a five-week square, and that's how you play this position. 
bishop d7 and in this position after bishop d7 white played queen c2 now that's where <clears throat> I would suggest just as well <clears throat> to make different move bishop b5 now this is positional move very positional and it's kind of a not that not that good of a move as a good test if white takes on c6 they very likely will get positionally winning game and Ripka knows that Ripka did not does not play bishop b5 because it's a test if black let's white take the knight black is going to be in bad shape but we assume white black will play knight a5 or knight e7 uh, trying to exchange light square for light square bishop that's the worst piece black has so when Ripka analyzes <coughs> the positions uh, some positions here's the difference between Ripka and uh, well actually most of the computer uh, engines and humans <coughs> we can set up trap traps if we see oh let me go bishop b5 <coughs> and if knight moves well then I come back so because knight has to go back anyway Ripka doesn't think like this she considers only the best answers by the black by the opposing side so so she says if bishop b5 knight a5 and i have to go bishop d3 it's like i'm making a draw not exactly a draw it's like a, it's like a close to a draw so we didn't we don't get anything from there that's why knight bishop b5 move was not played and queen c2 was played <coughs> attacking a five pawn knight e4 now queen b3 now attacking d5 pawn and b7 pawn knight f6 taking b7 pawn black is gonna play rook b8 that's uh, not a very good idea b2 pawn is hanging so after queen b3 knight f6 was played and rook f1 to e1 knight a5 queen c2 knight e4 and now now after knight e5 that's exactly according to Babayev's game <coughs> but it, it's interesting that that's a very strong master based on Russian school of chess so probably was very well thought uh, uh, coached and here is engine that uses positional ideas just as deep as anybody um, after knight e5, rook f8 was played because f3 is a threat and then f5 pawn may be problem. f3 was played. Uh, no, rook f8 was played, f3, knight g5. And here, <coughs> Babayev played rook e3 with the uh, a very clear intention of doubling rook on e file which is not a bad move but according to Ripka h6 almost wins the game not almost just wins the game because after knight f7 knight takes bishop that's the one t one case where it's okay to give our best piece for opponent's worst piece because it comes with total devastation. 
winning one pawn, winning second pawn, and developing a mating attack. Black is totally destroyed. So this is the way of solving positional problems and take advantage of weak squares. So this was <coughs> on also on the highest level, but I don't think it needed it. It could have, so if you put this analysis for Ripkov or overnight to analyze it, you know, you never know how much time is being used because sometime when engine ex exhausts all analysis, it stops. It may be stopped in one hour, maybe stopped in two hours, and maybe stopped in three minutes. You, we don't know that. But we know one thing only. We get impeccable, best, flawless, complete analysis and complete suggestions what to do in this on that opening and what to do in this on that position. So that shows the power of uh, this Ripka analysis. What I want to do is I want from time to time, and we're going to do that, we're going to be analyzing certain variations of various different openings, or sometimes bringing whole opening. If we think that this is good opening, and here is all based on the analysis, we should play this and this opening because and we're going to back up with extended analysis, or sometimes we will be even refuting some analysis. We will be refuting, and it's going to be like ongoing series. It's like updating uh, material as we go. And I remember a number of years ago, well, maybe like 30 years ago, um, there was a former world champion, Max Oeve, uh, was leading theoretical publication magazine. So it was like a Oeve pages. And there were a number of grandmasters were working on it, and they were updating their own analysis on that. But remember, that was the era where they did not have computer engines. Maybe it was longer than 30 years ago, maybe like 40 years ago. And I remember, I'm uh, old enough to remember these pages, and I remember reading them and getting very interesting material. But now, the analysis become a lot more precise and a lot d deeper and much more powerful. So we're going to be conducting this uh, analysis and uh, from time to time you will be getting new, very valuable update on your opening repertoire. Thank you very much.